Welcome to this new lesson of the Premiere Pro course. In this one, I'm going to teach you how to remove a green screen background from this footage or really from any footage, but I've included this practice shot in the videos. So go ahead and drag that into a new sequence. So I'm just gonna add it to a new sequence here. So the very first thing that you want to do with any green screen footage is to get rid of any part of your frame that is just unnecessary from the get-go. While I could apply the green screen effect we're going to apply, there's no point in trying to remove parts of this green screen that I can do already with a quick mask. And you can see here that this one isn't perfect because I have this little corner where the edge of the green screen uh, pop-up that I'm using is. And just so you know, the green screen that I'm using right here is just a quick little pop-up with a three light kit in my home studio. Whenever you're shooting something in green screen, the most important thing is to have a well-lit backdrop. You wanna try to get it as evenly lit as possible. And then also you want to light your subject separately so that they stand out from the backdrop and they are properly lit. So you do need extra lights when you are using a green screen to get the best results. So to create a mask, as I mentioned, the easiest way to do this in a custom manner is with our opacity masks right here with this pen tool. So I'm actually going to decrease my view to 50% and then click the pen tool so I can actually click outside of the actual video frame. So I'm gonna click here, 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 and I'm clicking and dragging to make it a curve rather than a sharp point. And then when I close it, it's going to get rid of some of that green screen already. And that just means when we at add that and apply the green screen effect we're going to apply, it doesn't have to work as hard to remove what I've already removed with this mask. The other important thing though is to make sure you scrub through your footage to make sure you're not cutting any part of yourself off or your subject off, which I am over here. So I'm gonna move these points over so that I'm not cutting off my arm at, or fingers at any part in this clip. All right, so once you're happy with your mask, now it's time to actually apply the green screen effect. Under the effects panel, underneath video effects and keying, we have a number of chroma key and green screen effects that we can use. But the one we're going to use and I suggest is the ultra key effect. Drag that onto your clip and apply it. I'm gonna change my fit back to fit so I can see my whole video. And then over in effect controls, we have the ultra key. So the first thing we should do is Set the color that it's trying to remove. To do this, you typically would use the eyedropper unless you have a very specific background color that has uh, a hex code that you could apply here. That's a number and letter combination that's designated to each and every color. But typically, you're just going to take this eyedropper, go to somewhere on your frame in the program monitor and choose that green. I try to use something that's kind of in the middle, not the brightest part or not the darkest part, but maybe a little bit in the middle too dark because I find that removing the highlights are a little bit easier than the shadows. So you can see there that it doesn't do a great job. To see a better view, you could change the output to alpha channel and here's really where you can see what is showing on your screen. So before it was kind of hard to see some of these darker bits down here that weren't removed. We do have just a black background. And so choosing the alpha channel is gives us a good sense of what we need to do to remove all the green screen. You can quickly change the setting here and it will automatically help if you do the aggressive mode. Relaxed is even less default is sort of in the middle. So jumping up to aggressive can help, but I'm going to show you if we stay with the default, how you can adjust this manually with the matte generation options. So here we have settings to adjust how much of the green screen to remove based off of the brightness and the hue. So 
tolerance is a good place to start because this can increase or decrease the amount of green that you're removing. Also, if you know that you need to remove more shadows, then changing the shadow, decrease, increasing or decreasing can help that. And then for highlights, the highlight feature can help a little bit, but I find the pedestal does a better job at removing the highlights. You kind of have to have a balance here because now I'm starting to lose some information in my hair. So this is where you have a balance and maybe I move my mat in over here if I'm not over there at all. So let's go ahead and change the mat which is up here in the opacity or the mask rather. I'm gonna move this over here, move this point like this. So now we're getting rid of pretty much all the green that we saw. Let's change the mode from alpha channel to composite. And so that's a pretty solid adjustment. We still see that we have a little bit of an edge here. We also have some green showing up on my cheek. So let's zoom in actually 200%. You can see that even better. So how do we remove that kind of stuff? We move down to the matte cleanup and spill suppression options. Matte cleanup, think of this as like the edge, adjusting the edge in or out and then softening it or feathering it. So choking it, increasing the choke will decrease the edge. You don't wanna do it too much because you can start to cut off some of your skin, but this looks pretty good. And then softening will increase or decrease the feathering. Now it's also going to shrink the choke or the edge. So you have to kind of balance it. And then lastly, contrast is going to try to sharpen those edges quite a bit. And I think sharpening the edges is a good thing because if you have a super sh soft edge, it starts to look a little bit more amateur. And then the midpoint sort of balances in between the contrast and the sharpening. So that can help just a little bit more too. All right, so that's looking good in terms of our edge now. Now the last thing is this green sort of tinge that we see, this tint that we see from the light. It's like a reflection that's bouncing on your subject and you often will get that. We can adjust that with spill suppression. Take the desaturate option and just drag it up until you, you don't wanna start desaturating your skin color, but desat it's basically looking for that color and it's desaturating it. You can also adjust the range, but when you do this too much, it starts to add magenta, which it's kind of doing actually already. It adds some magenta to it, the opposite of that green. The spill and luma settings can also fine tune it. You can see if I decrease the luma, I'm getting more detail back in my hair up above. So that's actually a pretty decent job. So let's actually zoom out to fit and play through this. Something to note when you're trying to remove green screen background is when you have motion, you're gonna get some of this motion blur, which combined with the reflection and how it's captured is pretty difficult to remove. So you kind of have to play around with it and see shooting at a higher frame rate can help so that you don't have as much motion blur. This was shot at 59 frames a second, 59.94. And so that is going to look better than at 24 frames, but you still have to kind of live with that with our basic cameras and doing this in Premiere Pro. If you want a more advanced way to remove green screen, you can look at After Effects to help improve this as well, which is, uh, I have another course on that too. The last option in Ultra Key is color correction. So this is if you've changed some things like you've desaturated the spill too much, you can actually add back some saturation to kind of combat that. So we lost some of that saturation based off of the greens. It's really starting with the greens, desaturating the greens, but it also took out of some color out of my face. So that can help. And then same with hue luminance that can adjust your your subject as well. So this is looking pretty good. The next step is to add a backdrop to this. And I've added some photos that you can download with the downloadable resources that you can practice with. So I'm gonna start with the office photo, thanks to Laura Davids. This was 
downloaded from unsplash.com. So if I take this, add it to my background, so I've moved the green screen practice footage up to track two, I'm gonna shrink this. So say I was trying to get a shot where it looks like I'm in the office. What's wrong with this shot? Well, the background is completely in focus. And so to make it look more natural, we're going to add a Gaussian blur. Gaussian, Gaussian, how do we spell this? Gaussian blur. Apply it to the background and then I'm just gonna increase until it looks pretty good. And you'll notice that when I'm doing this, I don't necessarily need to repeat the edge pixels because the size of this background is actually larger than the frame size. So unless I shrunk this to the frame size, I don't need to do that for this photo. So I think that looks pretty good. And that's a pretty dang clean green screen adjustment. So you can tweak it. You definitely want to go where there's some motion and see if you can play around with these things like the choke to get rid of any of that motion blur a little bit more. Maybe play around with the soften and the choke just a little bit more to try to remove some of that motion blur in between. But with everything, it's sort of a balance and with more perfect lighting, if I was standing further away from the green screen and I didn't have as much spill or shooting at a higher, even a higher frame rate, this would have, this motion blur could be improved in production as well. So you're kind of left with dealing how the footage is. The other cool thing too now is we can move my footage around. So say I want to shrink myself put myself in you know, the lower corner or something. I could have some graphics up here in the top right. Maybe to make this look a little bit more natural, we're gonna move this background down just a little bit, something like that. I can also double click this clip here and move it around. Now we can add some titles and graphics over on this side of the frame. Cool, so that is how you use the Ultra Key to remove green screen backgrounds in Premiere Pro. Let me know if you have any other questions and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.